This month on the World Sailing Show, how the final event of the Sail GP season played out. We'll be entering on port tack. The world's biggest yacht race in Italy. And more cup teams launch their foiling 75-footers. We begin today in Porta Cervo, Sardinia, where the climax of the 2019 52 Super Series was nicely poised as the fleet prepared to race. Unfortunately, a 40-knot Mistral wind lashed the island and meant the fleet would have to wait 24 hours before hitting the race course. The local Italian boat Azura was the one to catch with a six-point lead in the series standings, over second place Platoon of Germany and 11 points ahead of defending champions Quantum Racing. In the early stages of race one, Sled read the win best to lead Brunenesets and Prevetsa at the top mark. Platoon were forced to stay left and rounded eighth at the first windward turn behind their title rivals Azura and Quantum Racing. Sled held on for victory in the opening race from Turkish boat Prevetsa and Azura showed their fighting spirit on the final run to snatch third place. Sled of the USA were on fire, but in race two, they had to contend with the leg rail. The British boat used the left side of the course well to lead at the windward mark ahead of Quantum Racing. On the finish line, Allegre proved uncatchable, but Sled was right there in second, with fellow Americans Quantum in third. The battle between Platoon and Azura saw the Germans sneak home just one second ahead. It was close for Azura again in race three. Starting well, they looked set to dominate the race, but the wind swung very slightly and other boats came through. At the helm of Russian boat Brunenesets, Olympic champion Simi Fantella was eating up the track. With the breeze at a brisk 20 to 25 knots, conditions were fabulous and the two boats approached the finish line bow to bow. For Azura, the difference was again just one second in favour of her rival. The Italians had to settle for second place. After another day lost to strong Mistral winds, the fleet returned to action with three more windward-leeward races. The USA sled, owned by Takashi Okura, was still in fantastic form as the crew sensed their first regatta victory in five years on the 52 Super Series circuit. With Olympic champion Santi Langer calling tactics for helmsman Guillermo Parada, Azura seemed to falter in the light winds. The Italian boat ended up on the wrong side of the course and unable to match their closest rivals for the series title, Platoon. At the first top mark, Harm muller Spreer's German world champions were in the lead. Azura were eighth. Platoon could not be caught, taking the race four win just ahead of Sled. Azura finished a lowly eighth, and suddenly the chase for the overall season title had intensified between the German and Italian boats. Platoon were now just five points behind Azura. The final race of the day, and sick of the regatta, was the best for Breeze. The typically left-sided Porta Cervo course tested the fleet. It made for some full-on action at the first windward mark. Sled, dominating again, were clear out in front and looking uncatchable. Whilst in the chasing pack behind them, Azura nailed their ley line perfectly and they rounded the mark in second place. Platoon were not so fortunate. Slowed significantly in the traffic at the turn and this time, just when they needed to be pressurizing the circuit leaders, the world champions rounded in sixth. At the finish, Sled and Azura were first and second, but Platoon were a disastrous eighth. Suddenly going into the final day's racing, the overall series title was slipping away from the German boat and was in the grasp of Azura. Twenty knots of northwesterly wind and sparkling September sunshine gave us perfect conditions for the final day of this year's 52 Super Series. As had become custom here in Porto Cervo, Sled was out in front and cruising to their fifth race win in a row. Azura's helmsman Guillermo Parada, on his 52nd birthday, was concentrating on staying ahead of Platoon. 
Han Müller-Spreer's German flag boat pushed the Italians all the way. But Azura, on her home waters, crossed the line four, ahead of platoon, to clinch their fourth series title. I think that we may have not been the fastest or the quickest boat in any particular conditions, but the result shows that we were very consistent among the fastest, so I think we are happy. Disappointment for Platoon, who only last month won the World Championship. Again, second, it's, uh, that's, not, that's not nice. But we said not well, and that's a result of, out of it. But congratulations to the others. I mean, they're good. They have been very constant winning the season without winning any event. So that's pretty, pretty impressive, but very special congratulations to SLED. They showed an outstanding uh, performance this week. After five years on the circuit, Takashi Okura's sled completed a dream finish, taking the Porto Cervo 2019 event title. Unbelievable, yeah, we're just so happy. The boss is really happy, Mr Okura is really happy, and the boys have done a great job. Our shore crew and, uh, and everything, it's been uh, a good week for us. To get on the podium uh, on the top step for Mr Okura is super. But the closest and most competitive season of the 52 Super Series belonged to Italy's Azura. The battle for the 36th America's Cup is now real. After Emirates Team New Zealand and American Magic launched their AC-75s in September, October saw Italian challengers Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli launch their boat at the team base in Sardinia. Politicians, priests and fashion designers joined the team's sailors and shore crew to launch the boat they hope will bring Italy their first America's Cup. The boat, as you'd expect, looked fast and stylish. Carbon fibre and aluminium honeycomb form the hull. The two foil arms each weigh half a ton. But as the World Sailing Show went to air, there's no evidence of how she might perform. Within 48 hours, INEOS Team UK had launched Britannia, and two weeks later, she was flying. It was the moment British fans had been waiting for. So Ben Ainsley's team out on the Solent for their second tilt at the America's Cup. And like the Italians, chasing a trophy they'd never won in 168 years of trying. With a radical, wide hull shape and bigger wings than the Luna Rossa design, INEOS Team UK became the fourth team to launch. Ahead of the opening World Series event in Cagliari next April, when we'll see all of them on the water for four days of racing. nautical miles, 47 cities visited in 25 countries. This is Energy Observer. Her mission? To test tomorrow's energies under extreme conditions to help find greener ways to power our boats and ships. The floating laboratory is now using the latest sailing technology as well as hydrogen and solar power to help it journey through the world's oceans. Inspired by America's Cup boats, the new wing sails allow Energy Observer to produce hydrogen more efficiently. The two wings are the size of a squash court and can rotate 360 degrees to catch even the lightest breeze. As the wind moves the boat through the water, its propellers turn to help produce the hydrogen fuel. When not needed, the sails can be lowered. Although maximum speeds remain low, around eight knots, Designers are keen to prove that an environmentally clean boat doesn't have to be basic. Facilities below deck are luxurious and, by the way, almost silent and free of fuel smells. Expedition leaders Victorien Eroussard and Jérôme de la Fosse have just completed a tour that saw Energy Observer reach Spitsbergen, in Norway and then proceed into the Arctic Ocean, setting new boundaries for renewable energies. In Egy, il y a two ans et demi, on est parti de, de Paris en juillet. 2017 et voilà on est ici donc on est forcément changé hein, après un, un tel voyage on a vu beaucoup de, de choses très positives des choses aussi un peu plus tristes euh, je pense à ce challenge euh, qu'on a réalisé cet été hein, ce, ce voyage historique puisqu'on était les premiers à rejoindre euh, l'arctique 
grâce aux énergies renouvelables et à l'hydrogène. Voilà, C'est un voyage qui était extrêmement important puisque euh, donc le, le Svalbard, euh, cet archipel, est en fait le, le Grand Zero, l'épicentre du changement climatique. The tour concluded in London, having tested the wing sails in extreme cold and in winds of up to 50 knots. The boat will now return home to Brest in France, where an update of technologies will prepare it for a voyage to Japan in time to visit the Olympic Games. Coming up, the world's biggest sailing race and the finale of the inaugural Sail GP season. Welcome back. Still to come, 2,000 boats with a start line that's two and a half miles long. And Malta's Middle Sea Race. Five events over seven months contested by six teams. But in the end, the Sail GP season and million dollar prize was decided by just five hundredths of a second. Yeah, copy. Get ready to okay, protest, protest. Oh, protest! The first ever season of Sail GP came to a climax in the south of France on the waters of Marseille. Two teams had dominated the season, Australia and Japan, and would slug it out in a winner-takes-all match race. Four, two, one, coming up. With 20 points up for grabs, the battle for third remained wide open, just seven points separating third from sixth. Okay, win the cord. The China team came of age in Marseille. They started the season as one of the least experienced crews, but their helm, Phil Robertson, a world match racing tour champion, helped them to ever better results on the water, but climaxed with their first ever race win in Marseille, which saw them finish third overall. The Great Britain team had faced challenges of their own during this first season, capsizing in New York City, and suffering a dramatic boat-breaking nosedive in cows. But in Marseille, helmsman Dylan Fletcher and his crew started in great form, finishing the opening three races in the top three, but inconsistency later cost them dear. The British finished fourth overall. The home crowd had turned out to support local hero Billy Besson and his French crew, and they didn't disappoint. They claimed their first ever race win, a victory that meant all six Sail GP teams had won at least one race this season. Memories of the USA team's spectacular mid-season results when they beat both the Australia and Japan teams on their home waters in New York had faded by the season finale in Marseille. Helmsman Roan Kirby was eager to put points on the board and not finish last overall. With little to lose, the Americans pushed their limits, but three last place finishes saw them end the season bottom of the pile. Yeah, buddy. And so the Sail GP season had come down to one final match race between the two dominant teams, Australia and Japan, and the two dominant helmsmen, Tom Slingsby and Nathan Outridge, both Australian, both chasing the biggest cash prize in sailing, $1 million. Race Committee Team Australia will be entering on port tack. In a dramatic start to the race, Slingsby, helming Australia, entered the starting box early, incurring a penalty that forced him to start behind Outage's Japan team. So we just gotta enter and we're all good. Yeah. So advantage to the Japanese. But with the Aussies flying at speed, it was a cat and mouse chase. And by the first gate, just two seconds separated the boats. Slingsby decided to split, heading to the right side where the air was clear. But despite superior boat speed at times, when the pair crossed again, Outridge still had the advantage. End of leg three, and the Japanese seemed to be pulling away, but only just. Approaching gate four, and the Aussies had got ahead, but Japan had right of way, 
Outridge went on the attack, hoping to force Australia off course or to inflict a penalty. The move backfired. The Aussies had got ahead, and Japan were now in all sorts of trouble. Slingsby was suddenly in control, and the Australians looked in good shape through gate four. Not so Outridge and the Japanese. The race belonged to the Australians, who crossed the line to claim the million dollar prize and become the first ever Sail GP champions. Post race data showed that the final duel had come down to a mere 78 centimetres. Had the Australians been five hundredths of a second slower, Japan could have won. When you win the season and then uh, obviously you've got a quick match race to finish and it's so short and sharp, uh, yeah, it just feels like we deserved it. And uh, so I'm just so happy for our team because uh, the amount of work they've been putting in for all year, well, since about September last year, we've been working for this and uh, to get the payoff is huge. It was great racing. You know, it had everything. That was what we are expecting the race to be like and it's just tough when you're on the receiving end. But, you know, hats off to Tom and the team. They prepared really well all season long and. You know, they deserve that win, so well done to them. Australia had always been the team to beat, having won four of the five events of this inaugural Sail GP season. The 40th edition of the Rolex Middle Sea Race took place at the end of October in the waters of Malta in the heart of the Mediterranean. An enthralling week of racing saw 113 yachts from 23 nations entered, from double-handed to large maxis, as racing commenced in the imposing Grand Harbour of the Maltese capital, Valletta. The 606 nautical mile course took the fleet up to the Messina Strait, where they encountered light winds, before sailing around Stromboli, then Sicily and its outlying islands, and racing back to Valletta. Monohull line honours went to George David's Rambler for a record fifth time in a row. The American Maxi covered the course in two days, 19 hours and 43 minutes. The Maltese first 45, Elusive 2, was announced as the overall winner, ahead of defending champions Courrier Recommand of France. It was the first local victory for five years and an emotional one for the Podesta family, who dedicated the victory to their late father, Arthur, a three-time winner of the Middle Sea Race. Legendary French sailor Francis Joyon is on his way to Mauritius on the first of four Asian record attempts he'll be making in the coming months. He left Port Louis, France, on the 19th of October, aiming to reach Port Louis, Mauritius, in under 26 days, 4 hours and 13 minutes, record time he set a decade ago. Joyon aboard his 31.5 metre trimaran Edex Sport faces a complicated 8,800 miles of tricky weather patterns. After the Mauritius route, he'll take on three more record attempts. Mauritius to Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. From there, he'll race to Hong Kong before finally attempting the Hong Kong to London record, the 13,000 mile clipper route. The man whose clipper record Joyon will try to beat is Italian sailor Giovanni Soldini. He's also been busy in Asia, competing in the Hong Kong to Vietnam race. Light winds at the start were a struggle for Soldini's Maserati Multi-70, but the eight-man Italian crew soon caught the breeze and led for much of the race. That all changed in the night thanks to a storm just before the finish, which saw SHK Scallywag Fuku, skippered by David Witt, snatch the victory. At the 2019 awards night in Bermuda, World Sailing has crowned 15-year-old optimist world champion Marco Bredoni as Rolex World Sailor of the Year, the youngest ever winner. While Denmark's Anne-Marie Rindom won the women's award after her domination of the laser radial class. We'll have a full report next month. And finally, it's a unique sporting event like no other in the world. It's the biggest sailing race on the planet. It's Barcalana, and it takes place every year on the Gulf of Trieste in northeast Italy. This year, for the 51st edition, there were 2,000 boats competing. Not quite the previous year's world record of almost 2,700. Trieste's connection with the sea goes back millennia, 
and it remains a center of Mediterranean boat building and sail making. Today, it boasts the most sailing boats per head of population of any city in Europe. The Barcelona is a race for top sailors on modern carbon fiber racing boats and amateur weekend warriors challenging on small cruising vessels and traditional wooden boats. The start line was four kilometers. That's two and a half miles in length and placed close to the stunning shoreline. Trieste's famous gusty Bora wind did not blow. Instead, two knots of breeze and a glassy sea turned the start into a tricky affair. Out in front early on were a number of the favorites. Amongst them, the 90-foot Golfo di Trieste, once known as Alfa Romeo and Rambler. She's a two times winner of the Barcolana. Italian Olympic sailor Francesca Klapic had put together a crew of top female sailors from around the world. Their titles spoke for themselves. 14 worlds, eight European and nine national titles and seven Volvo Ocean races to their names. Arca Wild Thing was also challenging for victory. Hers is a very Italian story. The Benussi brothers, the helm and the tactician, had a falling out and didn't speak for years until their mother ordered them to make up and sail in the Barcolana. So they did, and they won. But conditions this year were testing them to the max. As the fleet struggled to catch the two-knot breeze, one yacht was slowly but carefully edging ahead inch by inch. Helmed and owned by former Olympic fin sailor Gaspar Vincec, Way of Life was beginning to take control of the race. The Slovenian Maxi had competed here many times. She'd finished third last year, but was looking to repeat her Barcolana victory of 2009. As Way of Life made its slow approach to the first mark in the lead, the wind virtually disappeared. The race officials, aware that the fleet could never complete the 18-mile course in the allotted time, shortened it and made the second mark the finish line. And so Way of Life now had victory in sight. After one hour, 54 minutes and 10 seconds, she crossed the finish line to take the Barcolana title, 10 years since last winning it. The celebrations on board marked a great Slovenian victory on their neighbors' waters off Trieste and kicked off party time in the city. Despite the lack of breeze, Barcolana had put on another great show. Next month on the World Sailing Show, all the news from the World Sailing Awards and who will make history in the Transact Jack Bar.